Many among us can't truly really understand the importance of freedom until it is taken away. Democracy may have its disadvantages, but you are likely to realize its true value only when you experience living in a communist country. But money, profits and consumerism have a beautiful correlation and that is why, regardless of the ideological differences with China, many democracies across the world ended up making China their very important trade partner. But now, the coronavirus may force many countries to redefine their geopolitical strategies. To know more, watch this report. We, in the West, have a strange relationship with China. We don't trust China, but we want to do business with the country. Ideologically, we are completely different. China is a communist country, and we believe in democracy. Not only that, frequently, China embraces those countries which pose a major threat to our own existence. Yet we have allowed ourselves to become over-dependent on China. However, it's not only China's fault. We are equally responsible. Our growth model is based on consumerism, which means work, earn and spend. We need massive scale production, which could cater to our high demand and consumerism driven hunger. We also need big markets so that our companies could sell the products that they manufactured. China ended up providing us both. Now, this model is not going to disappear overnight. But seeing what's happening in the world today, and with all the doubts related to China's ethics and principles, would it be wise to continue to completely rely on China? But who else if not China? Well, for long, many amongst us have underestimated India. But the present situation demands that we redefine our strategies. Let's take a re-look at India. If China is the world's factory, then India has been our favourite back office. With all its geopolitical and demographic advantage, India has shown that it has the capability and potential to develop the skill, scale and speed that we demand. India is the number one offshoring destination in the world, accounting for approximately 55% market share of the global services sourcing business. India has the world's third largest startup ecosystem. India is the second largest casting producer in the world. It's also the second largest producer of steel and cement. India real estate industry is expected to be the third largest in the world by 2030. India is already the second largest mobile phone manufacturer in the world. It's the third largest producer of coal and the fourth largest producer of iron ore. The country is the world's largest cutting and polishing center for diamonds. And in 2017, it exported 75% of the world's polished diamonds. In 2017, India became the fourth largest auto market. It's already the largest manufacturer of two wheelers and tractors in the world. It's the world's third largest heavy truck manufacturer and fourth largest car producer. In the present scenario, China may be a few years ahead of India, but India has the ability to catch up. China also built its infrastructure gradually, and if India wants, it can also do the same. For us and the world, the prospect of a powerful India sounds a lot less ruthless than a powerful China. Unlike China, India doesn't have massive geopolitical ambitions, expansionist policies, or the dream of global conquest. What's even more of a relief is that India is a democracy, and with all its internal problems, it will never expel or silence the journalists or whistleblowers like what happens in a communist country. Our consumerism-driven world needs a massive global factory, and India can and should rise to the occasion. India may not want to replace China, but it can reduce our over-dependence on China and play a key role in maintaining global growth. If India becomes one of the key centers of globalization, and if we invest in India, India has the potential and power to drive global growth. And geopolitically speaking, apart from the USA, if there is one nation in the entire world that is able to contain China in the long run, it's India. China first started as a manufacturer of our products, and as it gained prosperity, it also became the consumer of our products. Now the same is happening in India. Yes, India can be our new China. Even the Beijing-based Chinese think tank and bound think so. 
According to Anbound, China needs to seriously consider and study the rise of India's economy and India's competitive advantage. India, an ancient land with a growing young population, is an emerging market power. It's entirely possible for it to become the next China and poses great attraction to the world's capital. Yes, the Chinese think tank's apprehensions are not unfounded. And yes, it's wrong to say that there's no alternative to China.